Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me once again today, and welcome back to the battle for Westnoth. I was just looking at my stats here because I had a suspicion, which was that this scenario had been uh, a little bit more possible or easier than a lot of the others because the statistics have been closer than they were in some of the other scenarios to what I would have expected. And yeah, I think that was correct. I actually inflicted more damage overall in this scenario than st the statistical norm, although I still also took uh, a decent amount more damage than the statistical norm, and this turn I actually missed one hit it looks like that I should have gotten. If we look at all scenarios, I'm still negative on inflicted and positive on taken uh, throughout the entirety of the campaign, actually positive on damage taken by a significant margin. But, uh, you know, it happens. This is, these are slowly trending back towards the normal, so hopefully, hopefully things will get better as we go. In any case, let's move on to the next scenario. Plunging into the darkness. We are under the mountain, moving through the caves. It's so dark in here I can hardly see. Nah, really? It's dark indeed. We shall have to light torches and tread slowly and carefully. It may be there are still dwarves down here who can aid us. Indeed, we elves do not fare well in these dark pits. Wow, way to be racist, Kalenz. Alright, so, we want to find the dwarves. If any of our guys die, then it's a loss for us. So the important thing here is to move together. Unfortunately, none of these guys can gain any valuable experience, so this scenario will just kind of be, uh, just this. For a while, at least. But we've got a whole bunch of blood bats coming in, and as you can see, they unfortunately heal when they attack people. So the way we're gonna deal with this is we're just gonna burn them with magic. Magic and ranged attacks. Delphidor, come around that way. Blast him with lightning. And Conrad, you can actually stand right where you are and heal up a couple hit points since we don't need to move very fast right at the moment. Oh, that's 30% defense. Yeah, I don't stand there. What we kind of want is to get everybody onto, or at least close to, some of this 50% defense terrain. Alright. Let's let Delphidor go first. But, of course, doing this also takes a lot of time. Now, you may notice we don't actually have a time limit right at the moment, and for some reason, uh, the game is being a little bit jerky, it feels like. Uh, well, let's see. See what's going on here. Oh! Relgorn, we found a dwarf! Who are these who approach surface dwellers? On your guard, men! So they've taken us up into the castle, and I'm frozen for some reason. We come in peace, we come in peace. Here we are, Relgorn. Oh, do you? I see you're accompanied by elves! Wow, Relgorn, way to be racist. Okay, so the dwarves are down here. Elves have never done you any harm. And he says, Elves refused to honor the alliance. Many dwarves were slaughtered and the elves did nothing to help. And they're fighting because the dwarf elf uh, bickering is a stereotype. Alright, peace, peace, peace. We must not fight among ourselves. The evil orcs roam the lands above us. Explain your presence here, then. Who are you? Why have you risked life and limb to come to Kanalga, home of the dwarves? This scenario is a whole bunch of reading. Conrad doesn't know what to say. So, he's like, we're looking for the Scepter of Fire. Out of your minds? Surely you speak in jest. Nope, we're looking for the Scepter of Fire. Uh, you want to help us? We're going to look for it no matter what. No one even knows if the Scepter still exists. Ah, uh, shit. And Conrad is the heir. <laughs> and Relgorn is not impressed. He is Delphidor, yep. And he doesn't believe us when Delphidor says that he's Delphidor. And there we go, the lightning. The dwarves thought Delphidor was dead a long time ago, but Delphidor did not die, and he really thinks we can find the Scepter of Fire. If you help us, friend, all the treasures of Kanalga that we find are yours. Now, as, a, as an avid RPG player slash uh, loot maniac, that hurts my soul to hear, but okay, we'll find, we'll find the Scepter. All right, and here we get the ability to recruit Dwarven units, which is great, because Dwarven units are great, especially underground. So, that's the end of the scenario. It's just a little bit of a, a little bit of backstory, a little bit of information. You can see here some of these Dwarven units we've been looking at. So, Dwarvish Thunderers have guns, slash thunder sticks, which do a ton of damage, but only get one attack. So, terrain is super, super important for Dwarvish Thunderers. They also have a little bit of a dagger attack, but not too impressive. Dwarvish War Fighters, on the other hand, have axes and hammers, so two different melee attacks. One is blade damage, one is impact damage. 
This is basically for killing skeletons. Um, there are not many other units that are specifically weak to impact damage, but skeletons are very weak for it, so against it rather. So fighting the undead, hammer attacks are fantastic. We also have, I don't see any of them here. Hmm. There's also a unit called the Dwarvish Guardian, which is a fantastic unit for a different reason. Very, very defensive, and has that stalwart special ability that Merman Hoplites have. And this guy is a Dwarvish Lord, which is an upgraded version of the Dwarvish Fighter. So the Dwarvish Fighter advances to Dwarvish Steelclad, who has a bunch more resistances. Uh, dwarves are very tough. They have relatively good hit points, and they have resistance to most attacks. Steelclads have a lot more resistance, as well as a lot of HP. And then they advance to Dwarvish Lords, who still have a lot of resistances, and now also have a ranged attack. They can throw hatchets, so they can get a, a, little, bit of, a little bit of damage back um, against ranged enemies. Alright, let's move on to the next scenario here. Since that was only uh, five minutes. So, the Lost General. We're still under the mountains. We are now in the main Dwarvish Caverns. Underground roads once led to the different parts of the complex, but now everything lies in ruins. This is also another interesting stereotype that shows up in a lot of fantasy fiction, that the dwarves, specifically the dwarves who live under the mountains and are technologically advanced, are in this state of decline. That they've been pushed back, that their their grand underground empire has been ruined, that they are nothing like as great as they used to be. This occurs in Lord of the Rings. It happens in Warhammer Fantasy. It happens here. It happens in most... It happens in frickin... Rune Quest, which was an obscure, um, an obscure RPG setting, Glorantha from the '80s. It's it's very weird. Like it's it's almost part of the Dwarven character, as fantasy characters that the Dwarvish Empire is in ruins. Anyway, just interesting. So up up, I skipped past our our objective. So defeat all enemy leaders. We have 60 turns. So this is a long scenario, and we lose if any of our guys die. So let's grab that first. And we're going to do some recruiting and recalling. Now, like I said, dwarves are the best units down here. Most of my other units, not very good, to be honest. The elvish units, not fantastic. Dwarvish units underground are really good because they get decent defense in caves, 50%. Um, and they, they're, they're solid melee, they're solid ranged. Also, I want to level up dwarvish units, so we're going to use mostly dwarvish units. The other thing is, a lot of other units that are not dwarves... Um, cannot move effectively in cave. So you can see cave here is one movement cost. If we look at the elvish archer, cave is three movement cost. Elves are super slow in caves. If we look at elvish scouts, uh, once again, three movement cost and 30% defense. So scouts, elvish scouts, the, the units we've been using for fast, uh, to, to be our fast moving, well, scouts, are actually slower than dwarves inside caves. Thieves are decent in caves. Thieves are pretty decent. Um, and I'll probably use a couple of them just because they still have pretty high defense. Uh, so they can be useful. But mainly, mainly this is going to be a Dwarvish show. So we're going to recruit some Dwarvish fighters. We're going to recruit a couple of Dwarvish thunderers. We may also bring out some Elvish archers or some mages. Mages are still useful for the, the magical fire attack. Let's get some thunderers and then let's recall a healer. Um, we've actually got quite a stable of max level troops now. I'm impressed by this. We've got two Elvish Champions, two Marshals, a Sharpshooter, an Avenger, a Grand Knight, a Merman Hoplite, uh, a Huntsman, an Outrider, a Shied, an Assassin, and a Great Mage. Very, very solid stable of level threes. Uh, it would be nice to level up this guy and this guy, but like I said, I don't think they're going to be really good in this uh, in this context. We've got our Elvish Sorcerer, Sorceress, sorry, who could also use leveling up to an Enchantress. Um, we've got a Mage who's pretty close to max level, so let's recall him. And let's get Kalens down here a little bit to, to look at things. There's another castle right over there and some more villages. Delphidor can explore up that way. And you can see the Dwarves actually move quite quickly in this cave terrain. So let's set some dwarves down this way. Let's send our mage and this dwarvish thunderer up that way. We're at minus two gold right now, but that's not too bad a problem. Um, we do, as I said, need to recall a healer. So we may recall Raniel, just because having that mobile heal eight around is very, very nice. 
or we could start leveling another healer up. We've got a Dexterous Quick Shaman there. Let's recall her. Let's recruit another Shaman. And then let's recruit uh, another Thunderer. Some more Dwarvish Fighters. And another Mage. And I think that should be good for now. Uh, we'll leave Conrad here and move him out of the end of next turn if we need to. But you can see the map is pretty large. And the fighting in this scenario can get pretty tough. Kalens can take that. We can move up into this little castle area, which does not have a place we can recruit in, unfortunately. So we've got our dwarves kind of blocking this downward tunnel. And you can see dwarves actually have less defense in fungus, which is the equivalent of forests, than they do on hills and in open terrain. Let's move some troops up this way. Um, I think, if I recall correctly... Um, I think that... I don't actually remember which way the, damage, the, the danger comes from, so let's move up that direction. We'll send a healer down that way, we'll send a healer up this way, we'll send another dwarf that way, more dwarves down here. So we've got th three dwarves, a healer, and a mage, four dwarves, a healer, and Kalens. Send another dwarf up that way, and then a mage down this way, and then Conrad can accompany the southern gang. The Southrons, as it were. The, uh, the Haradrim. Get you on there. Big cave in south of here. Okay. Good to know. Get the Thunderers moved up behind us. Mage. Kalens. Kalens is very, very slow. He's an elf. What do you want? Get all our guys up. These passages seem to have been used recently. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. Could it be some kind of a general? Possibly possibly one who's lost? Hmm. Alright. Keep on trucking. Let's grab that village there. We're almost out of the negative money situation. Our poor Elvis Shaman is trailing very, very far behind. So when we run into the enemy, we will definitely want to kind of pull back and let the healers catch up. Because as you can see, they just move so slowly in this terrain. It is a real problem sometimes. Okay. And this is why this takes, uh, this is why this takes 60 turns, especially because these caves that have three movement points, yeah. This elf can only move one square per turn in a lot of this terrain. Elves are just very, very difficult to use in this in these cave scenarios. Okay, who goes there? Friend or foe? Desperately trying to rid these tunnels of orcs and trolls. Please help us in our quest. All right, let's rid these tunnels of its kind. So we found a couple of trolls, including a troll rock lobber, which is chaotic and so gets a bonus in caves, which are dark, and uh, has a very powerful ranged attack, which is unfortunate. We're going to get our dwarvish thunderer right there. We're going to push the line up, and you can see here... Uh, we've got a lot of dwarves and a lot of orcs fighting. So, you emerge into a vast natural cathedral, the walls arcing higher than you can see in the darkness. Stretching across the gallery is a great chasm, around which the cave floor appears to have been completely worn smooth. This was once the center of a bustling dwarvish empire, the remnants of which have been since driven into the upper caves of Kanalga by the forces of darkness. Yes, indeed. That is what it is. So let's push our dwarves up here. And this southern group would actually, I would love to have them join us. So what we can do is we can hook these guys around and try to take these orcs in the flank. The downside here is if we take too long, the orcs are probably going to overwhelm the dwarves. Because as we can see, the dwarves are already pretty beat up. Now they've beaten up some of the orcs as well. But two trolls, trolls are really, really tough for dwarves to handle. Um, trolls have low defense in caves, fortunately, so you can shoot them with thunderers. But rock lobbers, rock lobbers are rough. Because rock lobbers have, you know, they get to shoot back no matter what you do to them. Okay, so the dwarves are making some progress here. <clears throat> but it's not amazing progress. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got the, the winter cough coming on here. 
Yeah, and you can see once dwarves are on the open field, where they get low defense, it can be a serious, serious problem. So these green orcs, gonna be a little bit rough. Fortunately, he missed that boulder, because being hit with a boulder is all kinds of hard for dwarves. So I could go up that way, but I think I can also go down this way, and yeah, I can flank around all the way behind him. Which is what I want to do. See, our non-dwarven units are just falling further and further behind. Now, I would like to save this guy, but I would like to save him without standing on that terrain, because that terrain will get me clubbed by a troll. So, let's get him there, him there, that's only 40%, we can put him up there, that's also 40%. This troll can't move forward until this guy is killed, and it will take both of them to kill him if they can kill him. So what I can do is I can stand there, push Delphador up, okay, we should be able to clear out the trolls, but over here... These orcs are gonna get are about to get wrecked, and then these green orcs are gonna gonna come after us. I don't know why you're using the hammer, man. Yeah, he's he's just doomed. Super doomed. Super incredibly doomed. Well, he got a hit in. That was good. Okay, they've moved a crossbowman forward, so we can now do some damage to that crossbow. Oh, 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 no you don't, no you don't, go away. See, I got caught on the open ground. I got caught on the open ground and massacred. Alright, what we need to do is actually fall back, because we need to hold the hills and force our enemy to be on the bad terrain. We have Delphidor to kind of anchor right here. Let's get our mage up. Uh, the healer is way, way behind us, unfortunately. So we're gonna scoot up this way, scoot up that way, scoot up that way. And let's get our dwarves into this tunnel real quick so we can do some flanking maneuvers. Um, in cave, you have 50% defense, and orcs don't. Orcs only have 40%, so in cave terrain like this, dwarves have a distinct advantage. <clears throat> now, what we can do is, if somebody comes down to fight us here, we can push this dwarvish fighter over there, and then push a thunderer up here to shoot at them. But up on this side, as I said, we're going to be taking a little bit of work. So what I think we want is, we want a thunderer there, we want this dwarvish fighter to pull back, we want that dwarvish fighter... Um, actually, we could put him there. Now Delphidor is exposed on 40% terrain, but he's got enough health to take that for a round, and he can strike back. Well, if they put somebody here, we can probably clobber them. It's 50% defense. See, I don't want them to have that. I want to actually pull back into the cave entirely. Like... That. Mage might die. Mage might get clobbered here. But this guy can't reach. This troll can reach, so the troll might be able to clobber the mage. But I've got everybody on 50% defense here, plus they're closer to the healer. And I can send Kalens up this way to support them if I need to. And these dwarves, I think, can grind out a few kills right in here. So let's see if this will do it. I may have to potentially retreat Conrad to recruit more, but I'd like to push forward. We'll see. The problem is just they've got such levels. Ow. Ow. Very ow. That mage is pretty close to leveling himself, though. All right, so we've got a crossbowman coming up. That positioning is unfortunate because it means I can't flank him easily. It'll take me two turns to flank him. But let's go in with the axe. Should only have 40% defense there. We'll put you up there. We'll bring Conrad up to provide leadership support. Um, that dwarf warrior should actually go this way, along with the mage and Kalens. 
the healer can come over this way, though. Okay, so. We've got this goblin pillager. We've also got that troll. We're gonna move away to let the... Let's shoot the troll. Excellent. 14 damage right off the bat. Uh, our healer can run forward. You do 5 damage per shot, and you have a chance of being slowed. So we need to get this guy down to pretty low hit points. 64% chance to kill. Yeah, let's take it. Okay. I don't want this mage to die. I really, really don't. So we're going to pull the mage back to be healed and put the dwarf there. That dwarf is going to take a pummeling with only 40% defense. But those orcs are moving up that way, I assume, to hunt more dwarves. Uh, they can't get to us, so we'll be able to kind of take them piecemeal a little bit. Also, there's a village down there. Let's take that village real quick. Ah! And we spawned Berlin, who is a blue dwarf that we can't control, but he's loyal. He's loyal to the blue dwarves. So he's going to move forward to do some damage. Yeah, that dwarf's going to take a pounding. Ouch. Super ouch. This is the unfortunate thing. Dwarves do die. Uh, let's blast this troll. Okay, now you're at 27 health. 60% chance to hit with a thunder stick. Um, hmm, we're out of melee. We're out of melee entirely up there, so let's move you over there. Go in with the axe a little bit. And that won't quite kill you, so let's let this guy run in and take the damage. That'll be fine. Uh, Conrad. Or we could put Conrad in, actually. And Conrad could probably... 47%? Yeah, let's move Conrad in. Because that guy will shoot at the dwarf anyway. Move these units up that way. Healer over here. Now, for Monsieur Orcish Crossbowman... If we take the shot, we're going to get a lot of retaliatory damage is the thing. And I'd rather not. So let's instead slow him. Excellent. Now he's at 21 health. Which still doesn't solve the problem. And our maid, our healer is about to die. It'll be okay. We're bleeding troops. But as long as we fight our way through here, I think there's another castle we can take. Yep. Oh, she survived. And he survived. Nice. Okay, now we can either kill him with the... We can kill him. We can try to kill him with the Thunderer. Let's move you, sir... Back a step. Take the shot. Excellent. Great experience on a Dwarvish Thunderer. This troll can get all the way over there. So, let's put you back on the village. Let's get you up here. Advance you, advance you. You, sir, I would like to get out. Let's try to kill this crossbow. Okay. That wasn't ideal, but I'll take it. And then we can advance you to take a shot with the Thunder Stick. Missed. All right. Uh, you are being a huge nuisance, actually. Let's put you back there. Put you up there. This Dwarvish Thunderer might get the shit kicked out of him this turn. By the, uh, the Troll Rock Lobber, if nothing else. But, or the tro Troll Rock Lobber might come up here to fight him. But if so, that'll be great, because then this Troll Rock Lobber will be alone and will blast him and give some more experience to somebody. Alright. Oh, came in with the fists. With the fists! He came for my life with his giant, rocky fists. Uh, let's pull back to heal. And we can get this guy up to take a Thunderstick shot. Excellent. We can put you there. And then, actually, we can put... Let's hope this guy moves forward and that'll free up a little bit of space. Kalens, push up this way. Mage. Uh, Shaman is healing up. Let's get Thunderer and Fighter right there. 
that may tempt the trolls to come over and attack me. And we'll get Oagik up there. And then Delphador right there. Alright. Okay, excellent. Now we're starting to get into some business. Now we're starting to do some damage. That Thunderer, man, he is doing work down in here. That Thunderer is putting it on. He is pulling his weight. He is definitely making a name for himself. That means I need to protect him because he's going. they're going to try and kill him. Uh, that troll I would love to murder. Love to love to love to murder that troll. He's got 32 hit points, 65% chance to kill. Um, hmm. I need to undo that, actually. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Here's what I'm thinking. I can get this guy over here to axe him, but he's going to take a lot of damage. He'd do a maximum of 18. Uh, no, not worth it. And he can't kill the Dwarvish Thunderer anyway. So what we can do is just leave things like this, actually. Put you right. You have 29 hit points. 28 damage with the fists. We can put you right there. So if the troll goes for you, you'll gain some experience. We can put the healer right there. We can put Delphador right there. Excellent. Okay, now we can move... Healer, Dwarf, Dwarf for heals, Thunderer, and Conrad. And we can go into melee with Conrad here real quick. Nothing. Uh, the Thunderstick could actually kill in one hit. This is the real value of Thundersticks, so let's try it. Excellent, yes. Dwarvish Thunderers, if they're used properly, tend to gain experience pretty rapidly because of that one-hit kill effect that they have going on. Especially under leadership, it is hard to handle sometimes. Alright. And this guy is going to rush out and die for the cause, which is amazing. I love it. Yep, he's going to die for the cause, but he did a little bit of damage before he went down. Now, let's see if we can get this Thunderer another kill real quick. Conrad, come up there. Oof. Um, 20. Just shoot. Nope. Oh, that was bad. That was about the worst it could be, actually. Um, hmm. I don't want to lose this Thunderer now that he's got experience. This guy has no melee, has no ranged attack. So, why don't we bring Delphidor out to lighten with him? Excellent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then we can pick whether we want a mage or a thunderer to get the level. Let's give the, the thunderer the level, if we can. Nope, we can't. Okay, let's give the mage the level then. Then let's give the experience to this dwarvish warrior in the way that makes the least, uh, the, the least difference, the least sense. <sighs> okay, well, that's fine, I guess. This troll I'd love to kill. Let's see if we can make it happen, maybe. We can't really. Um, yeah, because the space is taken up by Duldusol. He has 20 hit points, and if we come up with the sword, we have a less than even chance to kill. So we're just going to go right over there, and he may be able to kill my dude if he hits him with the rock. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Alright, more of those level 2 orcs are coming out. That's kind of to be expected. I definitely don't want to lose this guy either, so... Conrad needs to step... Uh, what's that? 16... 14 damage. Let's move you up. You, sir. You want to get a really good shot. As do you. All right, we're just going to blast him real quick. Come on. Wow. That was a very bad blasting. I didn't like it at all. Hmm. That's dirt, right? So one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five. Yeah, so you can come over there. 
and still make it there. So yeah, take the shot. Okay. Okay, lost him. Take the shot. Thunderers are super, super feast or famine. Like, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Like that, right there. Three 60% shots in a row. Three 60% shots in a row. I am amazed sometimes. Simply freaking amazed. Well, let's do some more damage to him. Sacrifice that mage. Uh, he can't really move, so you can pull back. You can come up that way, you can pull back that way. This mage can come down here to blast, but it won't really make a huge difference. So that mage can actually just stand right there, I guess. And Conrad can come over here to slow this orcish warrior down. And then you can come up there. Okay, so we're not going to lose anybody this round except for Huel, who we might lose. We might lose Huel if this guy goes in with the torch and gets two hits. We'll lose her. Beyond that, we should be fine. Yep, he went in with the torch and got two hits. And now they're coming for Delphidor. Alright. Okay. Okay. We're gonna try this again. We need the leadership bonus. We're gonna swap positions, though. Because this is higher defense, so don't let me down. Alam Dural. Please. Actually, no, wait. He's 34. We can get the shot on him. So why don't you take the shot here? Alright. Fine. You stand over there. Be a roadblock. You... He's at 34, right? Uh, hmm. Delphidor can pull back. You can take the shot with no risk. Excellent. Great. So, we promoted to a Dwarvish Thunderguard. The Thunderguard has an even more ridiculous... Uh, one-shot damaging attack, and a better melee. Actually, a pretty decent melee attack. As for this clown here, I'm thinking we can kill him with fairy fire. I was wrong. I was wrong in thinking that we could not kill him with fairy fire, but we can probably kill him with this dwarf, and if we kill him with this dwarf, then the dwarf will level up, because he's 16 experience, and the dwarf needs 15 more to level. All right, there we go. So now he's leveled to a Dwarvish Steelclad who has really, really good melee attacks and all those resistances and high health. Exactly what we need to hold a line. Meanwhile, you can go over there to provide some heals and you can step up here to heal Delphidor. Okay, doing fine, doing fine. Let's go. Um, This might actually be a decent place to stop. We've got two Dwarf levels. We've got a Mage close to leveling. We've been going about half an hour and we're definitely going to need another video to finish up this episode. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this content, of course, leave a like on the video. Consider subscribing to the channel and or supporting the Patreon if you enjoy what I do. Links to all those are, of course, in the description below. And I will see you next time to uh, finish off the Lost General scenario here. If you look at our stats, uh, this turn, we're doing well. Overall, for the mission so far, we're more negative on inflicted damage than taken damage, but I'm willing to chalk that up to... Uh, random chance. The frustrating thing was that one turn where we took three 60% shots and missed them all. That was annoying. But in any case, thank you so much, and I will see you all next time.